Before we even explain anything about the Astro syntax, let's just look at this file, index.astro in the AstroWin template, because you'll already be able to see the high level idea of what's going on. Just look at the markup in relation to how the page looks visually. We have this component hero that represents the top section with the title, subtitle, and image. And if we scroll down a little bit, we have this features section looking in the markup, Lo and behold, there is a features component. Now, this is not really a showcase of the power and flexibility of Astro, which we'll get to, but it is a showcase of the clear and readable markup that you can have thanks to the abstractions that Astro gives you. Now, Astro is not just another reactive front-end framework like React, Svelte, or Vue. It's not like Ruby on Rails, and it is not like my beloved Leptos framework that I talk so much about on here. Astro exists on a different plane. Let me explain. All the choices we've mentioned so far are intended for highly dynamic websites. And Astro can actually be used for all of those things as well. But what about sites where the content of every page is the same for every user and isn't updated based on what the user does? These are static sites. This is actually the type of site that Astro is a great fit for, even though it can also be used for these more dynamic sites. Now, if we just had a plain landing page without anything else going on, we could just bang it out in plain HTML if we wanted to. But as soon as we start adding things like feature pages, articles, product documentation, and so on, things are going to get out of hand pretty quickly. We'd be duplicating code everywhere, we'd have to maintain all the links connecting the pages together, and so on. There is another approach called static site generation that addresses this problem. Examples of SSG frameworks are Hugo, Jekyll, Gatsby, and Astro. Okay, let's look at what Astro specifically brings to the table. This video is not sponsored by Astro, but it is sponsored by TinyHost, which is pretty much the simplest deployment platform you can possibly imagine. Once we're done building our example projects, we'll be deploying them with TinyHost. Thank you so much to TinyHost for supporting the channel. To create an Astro project, we run npm create Astro at latest. We'll get a wizard asking us some questions. We can see in this project tree, we have both Astro files and Markdown files. Let's talk about the Astro files first. Astro has its own compiler and is technically its own language. And this is what it looks like. We have what's called a front matter at the top of the file enclosed in a pair of triple dashes. You can write JavaScript code in the front matter or TypeScript. I know what you're gonna ask and no, you cannot write Rust code in here. I already tried. By default, the code in the front matter is run at build time. You can also have it run on the server on every page load, but that's not the default behavior. After the front matter, we have the template for the component that we can write in plain HTML if you want to. It'll work fine, but that's not what we're here for, right? If you've used React, the syntax is actually kind of like JSX where you can interpolate values from your JavaScript code. In Astro, that's the code in the front matter. So we're defining this constant in our front matter and then interpolating it into our Astro markup. Of course, we can do crazier stuff like having this array in the JavaScript and generating an HTML list that reflects its contents. Components can also be reusable. Let's put a component inside another component. We can make a loud text component that has an H1 tag with some text in it. In another component called cool page, we can import loud text and use it as part of the cool page template. We can also have the loud text component accept properties from components that consume it. To do that, we can use the astro.props object. The names of the variables we assign it to will become the properties that the loud text component accepts. So now the consuming component dictates the text that the loud text component shows. One very common requirement is that every page in your website have the same header and the same footer. We could manually put the same header and footer on every single page, but it'd be easier to put them in a reusable component. But we can't really do that in the way that we did before because we need the content in the reusable component to somehow surround the content of the component where we use it. In Astro, these components are called layouts. Let's create a component called simple layout that has our header and footer in it. The slot element tells the framework where to put the HTML that the consuming component places inside the simple layout component. So now on any page we'd like to have the header and footer, we can just import simple layout and enclose its content in a simple layout component. I mentioned earlier that you can make more dynamic sites with Astro, sites you might otherwise choose to use Svelte or React for. That's because you can actually include Svelte or React components directly in your Astro components. You do need to install a package for the particular framework you're going to use. In the case of React, that would be npx astro add react. And then you can just add a React JSX file into your project, import it into your Astro component, and then reference it in the template. By default, it will be rendered on the server, which means it won't change after the page load. One advantage of that is that the user won't have to download the entire React framework to see the component. But if you want it to be client-side rendered, 
you can just add the client load attribute. Then the component will be rendered in the user's browser, just like it would be if you were building directly with React.js. The other type of template that can be used in Astro projects are plain markdown files. Well, almost plain. This flavor of markdown supports a front matter at the top of the file, just like the Astro files. But this front matter is a bit different from the Astro front matter. It contains the properties of the file, which are key value pairs. For example, I can have a tags property and assign a list of values to it. And then elsewhere in the project, I can use this metadata to make decisions about how to surface links to this page to the user. I can also specify a layout that I'd like to use. The general idea here is that developers can add and work with static content much easier in markdown files than you'd be able to with the Astro HTML syntax. You can have these markdown files in your pages directory and Astro will create routes for them just like it would for an Astro file, but it'll be rendered as HTML. For example, these hashtag titles will become heading tags and so on. Now let's zoom out and look at the conventional way that Astro projects are organized. The component directory is not a special directory in the sense that the files within it are treated in some special way. It is convention to put reusable components in the component directory, but that is a convention and not a strict requirement. You can technically just put reusable components anywhere under the source directory. Under the source directory of the project, the only special directory is this pages directory right here. Every file in the pages directory represents a distinct route in the web application, and the path of the route is dictated by the file structure. So if I have an Astro file in source pages about index.astro, that's going to correspond to the route slash about in the end user's browser. You can take things even further by representing multiple routes in one Astro component, and even enclosing the file name in square brackets to make it into a path parameter. The layout directory is the conventional place to put Astro components that are reusable wrappers for other content. To build our project and serve it on localhost, we can do npm run dev to build all our static files and start a web server hosting them on localhost. Any changes we make will be hot reloaded, so there's no need to restart the server. Now, say I want to deploy the project. Of course, you can integrate this with a CI/CD pipeline using something like GitHub Actions, so anytime you push a commit, the change gets deployed to production. But there are some use cases where that wouldn't really be ideal. Remember the output of an Astro build is a bunch of static files. So we can just do npm build and we get a disk directory with all the files that comprise the website. Let me show you how fast I can deploy this to the public internet with tinyhost. I've added a zip command that gets run after my npm build to create a zip file out of the disk directory. Boom, there you go, it's live. This part of tinyhost is completely free by the way. You can just create an account and you immediately get the ability to do this. You can drag and drop a zip file, a PDF or text file here, and it becomes a live website. So when might you take this drag and drop approach instead of a heavyweight CI CD pipeline? Well, one easy example is when you have a site that almost never changes, like a product landing page, for example. In that situation, setting up a full CI CD pipeline might be overkill. Another example is where you have a draft of something or maybe five different drafts and you wanna share them without actually committing any code. In the free tier, there is a little tiny host banner on the bottom and you can deploy only one site at a time. And then in the higher tiers, you can deploy multiple sites at the same time. At this point, we've seen some of what makes Astro nice, but a lot of its appeal actually resides in the ecosystem of Astro templates available. There's a template repository on the official Astro site and it has some pretty nice options. Most of these templates are actually free, which is really nice as well. There are some paid ones like this Galaxy one, for example. Anyway, I've cloned the repository for this popular Astrowin template and I ran pnpm run dev. So let's take a look around. All right, so this template has a few use cases. There is a landing page that we're seeing here, which you could use this for a software product, a SaaS product, probably a lot of different things. You can see it has this hero image at the top, big title, big subtitle, and then you scroll down, you get a list of features, you know, all these nice little widgets and all of these are customizable and you can assemble them onto a page however you like. They're very modular in that sense. This is a list of all the widgets that the theme comes with. Yeah, and then there's FAQ widget. Uh, I don't know what this thing downloads widget, something or other. There's also a blog capability. So you can make this the main page if you want to, or it can be a kind of a side page in addition to whatever landing page you go with. But this is a full on blog here. And each of these blog pages or articles is represented by a markdown file. So to add these, you would just add a markdown file to the appropriate directory and it would automatically display here. You can add tags to these and these tag pages automatically are generated as well. Other landing pages 
are include like a, a mobile app one. There is one that is purely for lead generation for a hypothetical product that has not been released yet. All these landing pages are just reset ways of assembling the widgets together. You can create your own and assemble the widgets together however you like. And when we look at this page in the code, it's pretty clear. We have this hero component, which contains this big title, the subtitle, the two buttons, and the hero image. We have this hero tag, and inside are a set of actions. Each of those is a button. Then we have an image, which we provide a link to. And then there's two fragments, one for the title and subtitle. And the point is you can get in here and customize really quickly. And then if you scroll down, we have this note widget. That's, that's what this is. And then you get the first features widget that's here. And you can see the way it accepts the properties is really nice. We just have this items property that accepts uh, an array and each element of the array has a title description and icon. And that's where these all come from here. And so it's super easy to customize really quickly, even before you know anything about Astro, right? This markup is pretty much self-explanatory. Let's jump in here and start changing stuff. Let's take this big title here, um, hello world, right? We have a, a second line here. Uh, we can just delete that, right? So we've already changed our title and we can do the same thing for the subtitle. Boom, super easy to get in here and change stuff. Let's take a look at this blog list because if we wanna add a new blog entry, all we have to do is add a new markdown file to a directory called content. And we don't even have to update this page here to add a link to our new blog article. It does that automatically for us. Let's see what that looks like. So let's go to that content directory. It's under content post. So let's uh, copy this landing article here, new article.md. And we wanna make the publish date of, let's change this to 2024. Uh, look at that. We created a new markdown file, specified a publish date, and it's already added to our list of blog entries. Actually, this is gonna be about, uh, about Rust. And we're gonna add a tag we have some tags here already, but we'll add one Rust, delete the other ones. And so that displays here, just like you'd expect. And we can even click on the Rust tag. We didn't even make a page for the Rust tag, right? It automatically generated this, this tag page. Again, all you have to do to make a new blog article is jump in, create a new file in the content directory, and that's it. You just push that new file at build time, the changes to this list of blog entries is done for you and the creation of the tag page and everything like that. So, so yeah, Astro perfect for blog sites. If you don't want to use something like WordPress, unless you like drama, of course, then WordPress is probably the way to go. So I just did an NPM build. So I have the disk directory created and I zipped it up into a zip file. Done. That's it. It's on the public internet. Everything's here. My, my landing page, my blog list, including my new blog posts on why Rust is great. So that is Astro. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. You've heard my opinion, but I'd love to hear yours. Thank you again to TinyHost for making this video possible. If you like this video, you'll probably also like this other video that I made that YouTube thinks you'll like. Maybe it's a video about language models. Maybe it's a video about Rust. Maybe it's a video about keyboards. I don't know. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.